Yo. This video, we got to talk about the Vial of the Sands. You got to get it. You got to start selling it on the auction house. It takes a million hours to farm, but it makes you a million gold. So the trade-off is there. Um, <laughs> you got to do archaeology. Everybody loves it. Got to dig a bunch of holes. Holes over there. Holes over there. Holes up. Holes down. Everywhere. You got to dig the holes. It's going to give you a two-person flying mount. It's a dragon, so it could be extra cool in dragon flight. Maybe get some extra speed and carry people. We'll see how that works. Uh, ultimately, you're going to want to sell these on the auction house, and I'm going to show you how to get it. We got three steps to get this done, and you're going to want to choose a character to do all the digging, to do all the Vial of the Sands crafting, and you're going to need to level that character's uh, archaeology up to 525 uh, and 600 and you're going to need to get uh, alchemy up to max level 300 and you're going to need to get the lore walkers reputation up to exalted you're going to need to get the oldham uh, accord up to exalted you're going to have to go through some BFA uh, Heart of the Azeroth unlocks. You're going to have to go through the Nazjatar uh, intro questline in BFA. Um, you know what? It uh, It's a lot. So, I don't know. Maybe it's not worth it. Maybe it's not worth it. Hey, this is just do gaming. We out. Okay, okay, okay. It, uh, it actually is worth it because you're going to be making a ton of gold off this thing. There is a lot of processes you're going to have to go through to get it set up. You are going to have to do those quests. You are going to have to get those two uh, reputations up to Exalted. And you're going to have to dig a bunch of holes. Uh, it doesn't... It, it, do it over time. Break it up into hour-long sessions. And uh, don't overwhelm yourself with it. It does make you a lot of gold. But... Um, if you burn out trying to get it, then <laughs> all the gold is not worth it. So take your time with this one and uh, take it at your own pace. I definitely took this video at my own pace and it took me plenty of time to get set up and to record the things. And we're going to go over everything in detail in this video. And if you stuck around and you think it might be worth it, let's get it. Step one, Warlords of Drainer Archaeology. When you're in Stormshield, don't forget to pick up your archaeology. Uh, unlock it all the way up through Warlords of Drainer. And uh, you'll start getting missions on your mission table immediately. And those will give you fragments to do solves to start increasing your archaeology. Additionally, they'll give you 100 gold maps you can vendor to the vendor for free 100 gold. So pick up archaeology. I picked it up on every single character, otherwise I would show you what it looks like. Pick up the archaeology, start doing the quests, um, and you'll get you'll also get rare missions from archaeology to turn in uh, quest rewards into your garrison, and those give you more resources and more archaeology points. And then you can passively level archaeology on all your characters, and you can make hundred gold. Just by sending missions. Don't sleep on it. Pick it up. All the characters. So what do the missions look like when they don't complete? This is uh, rewards of 100 fragments. That's excellent. However, I was already too close to 250. So it just doesn't complete. What you're going to want to do is clear out your solves. you got to solve some of these fragments. And then you're able to complete the mission. One more to show you. Body village. So I got the same problem, air quotes problem, on this character. I'm unable to complete this mission because my maximum is 250 and I already have 225 and this rewards 50. So it just sits in the completed status and it won't complete. Just do some solves. You're going to need to do these solves anyways. You want those restored artifacts. This is a really easy way to get some passive archaeology upgrades. Each solve is worth five points. 
then you can complete the mission. And you get these. We already went over that. Looking good. Let's take a look at the rewards. After opening up all the solves, we are going to turn them in. Turn them in in the garrison. I've actually never done this, so we're going to see it together for the first time. Place the artifact. What did it give us? It gave us restored artifacts times three and a solve bonus. Excellent. So this character has six of those tokens. That was one of them. All six of them, I think, are, are done here. So I'm just going to turn all these in. I got these all solely from the mission table. So you're getting three restored artifacts per turn in, which is pretty wicked. We're going to take a look at what to do with those as well. What the options are that it's given us. Let me turn off the auto turn in. Might as well do that for the last turn in. <laughs> take our time with it, right? On display, turn in. Yeah, it just tells you the reward. Okay, cool. So there's there's one more here. Six times three, 18 restored artifacts. Pretty amazing, straight from mission tables. Did zero digging. Across all the characters, I have 174 artifacts and lots of those missions to turn in because this is the first time I've ever touched the mission turn in. I just collected them and solved them and called it a day. Let's take a look at the solves. Yep, we got a couple. Drop in that fragment. Solve it. Gave me a quest. Already on that quest. How am I already on that quest? Turn it in. This is super awkward. I think I already turned that in. Anyways. We're not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to do this other solve, though. Restored artifact. That gives you one restored artifact. Easy. And it levels your artifact. Um, archaeology power. Looks like those turn-ins did not level my archaeology power. Which is okay. Every solve gives you five power. All right, 28. That's it. That's how you turn in the quests. Pretty simple in your garrison. No problemo. Step two, Ultima Accord Reputation. Okay. This is the portal to Oldham. It is over here in Stormwind. If you have not unlocked your uh, BFA intro quest line and your Heart of the Azeroth, you're going to take that portal and you're going to be dumped into the old version of Oldham. This version of Oldham is level 35, 30 to 35 and you need the max level, the max level for BFA, so I think it's level 50. Anyways, uh, you need to unlock the... I'm going to show you how to do it. It's not that hard, it does take time. You gotta unlock the Heart of the Azeroth, you gotta do the intro line to BFA, and then there is a four quest uh, quest line in Boralus, starting at a quest line called the Un an Unwelcome Advisor. Uh, there's four steps to it, and that's gonna take you right back to Oldham, and it's gonna turn Oldham into the big boy Oldham, where you're gonna farm the experience of uh, Oldham Accord Reputation. And I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. Okay. We are going to unlock the Heart of the Azeroth uh, quest line. Do this on a boosted character. Either boosted to 50 or to 60. And it should be pretty simple. You'll have this portal to Boralus. Go ahead and take that portal to Boralus. And uh, there's a five quest quest line we got to go through. That should give us the Heart of the Azeroth. 
which will help us get access to Oldham Accord reputation. All this phasing is a bit of a nightmare. A dying world. Go over here and uh, collect this quest right up here from Messenger Speaker. Champion, Azeroth cries out for your aid. Come to Silithus. There's something you need to see. Oh, uh, we're going to go back to Stormwind and we're going to fly over to Silithus. I'm going to record this whole thing. I'll bump up the speed at points. Average time. Okay. Just going to follow this. <laughs> Tells me to take this portal to Caverns of Time and fly over. Grab it. over. Oh, we're so. I speak for Azeroth. Her world. The entrance to the chamber is this way. Come on. Oh, this chamber is in ruins, champion. It won't hold together for long. We're just gonna you skip have this. Done. Watch them. Check them out. Cool content. Uh. Well met. Just gonna skip them. Azeroth calls to you, champion. These stones she offers it a gift. One born of her own essence. Back to work. The seal in this chamber protects the world's soul. But with all this Azerite bursting through, the seal is close to shattering. If you use your amulet to absorb the Azerite, its power should mend the chamber's seal. I didn't play any of this in BFA. I didn't play in BFA. So, if you're like me, you're going to have to go through this quest line. Champion, remember your duty to Azeroth. That's it. I think it's working. Keep going, just a wee bit more. Alright, Stormwind Keep. Hopefully you got your Hearthstone set. Let's do it.
We're going to turn this in, then we're going to go back to Boralus, and hopefully we can just go straight to Ultima Chord. <clears throat> Everyone is here. What news do you bring, Spymaster? Sometimes Recently, we must fight. Horde agents broke into the stockades, safe freed to two Zandalari prisoners. A princess and a prophet. Right. Listen to these guys talk. Where? What of the eight warships we sent in pursuit? Only one returned. Survivors say they encountered strange and terrifying magics. And a massive Zandalari fleet. Impossible! It's one of Sylvanas' tricks! It has to be! Jaina, perhaps you could help us see what this survivor has witnessed. I think this is the quest it's I'm supposed to be doing. Provided Show us. us. Show us what happened. I'm not sure. <laughs> The Horde makes allies of the Zandalari. We won't have the power to stop them. Yeah, this is it. Then we must make allies of our own. My people command the most as no power to the prepare my ships. Champion, is this it? meet me in the harbor when you are ready to depart. So, Gen, how are your sea legs? Hmm. <laughs> Steady Can't as ever. attack that target. Take a Seventh Legion vessel along yeah. as an escort. Secure a base of operations in Kul Tiras. Our plan must not fail. Uh, Please, so we might have to, to go through that quest line to do the Nazjatir um, quest line to unlock the portal to the Oldham of Accord. But we're going to try to cheese it. Now that we have the Heart of Azeroth, I want to see if we can get um, just directly to there. We did get the Heart of Azeroth, did we not? I don't see it. But we definitely got it. Yeah, we're going to go check out Boralus and we're going to see if the quest line for Oldham is open. If the quest line is not up for Oldham, you're going to have to do that Najatir quest line, which is a bit of an hour. And I don't think I have it in me to do it again just to show the video. <laughs> so let's hope this cheese works. Got a sneaking feeling that you got to go through the uh, quest line. I don't see any question marks for it. Exclamation mark, points, marks, whatever. <laughs> So the quest to get over to Oldham actually populates down here, in this little room down here. There's some quest givers that will pop up in here. Once you do the Nazjatar quest line, and I will link to that quest line, but I am not going to follow you guys on that quest line. It sucks. <laughs> it's long and it, uh, I, I didn't enjoy it. So if you're playing in BFA, Use a character that you already done it in BFA and uh, just use them. And then all you have to do is come down here and take the quest line to get to the Ultimo Cord. And then the portal in Stormwind will, uh, that'll take you directly to the Ultimo Cord. If you try to take that portal without doing the opening quest line, um, it will take you to the old phased version of Oldham that is level 35 and it's not the max level. I might as well go ahead and show that room. Because this drove me nuts when I was trying to level.
So this is the portal to Oldham. Um, however, if you haven't done that opening quest line and got your part of the Azeroth and the Najatar opening sequence, then you'll go to the old Oldham. And Blizzard uh, makes it super confusing because there's different phased versions of these places. So, well, this is Oldham. If you see the level, the level is actually 35, 32, 35. Uh, and you need the Oldham that is max level. I think it's uh, 50, level 50. So, um, can't take that portal until you do that quest line. That quest line. I'm going to take you to where that starts too. Okay, so this is where we left off. The Tides of War quest took us here. We listened to the council, and then it gave us this quest to the Nation of Kul Tiris. We got to go out to the dock, and I think it's going to take us over to Morales and start us into the Nazjatar quest line. Once you complete that, uh, you'll be able to go back to Morales and go into that uh, little sub area and accept the quest that is called an unwelcome advisor that is the quest line that will unlock your Oldham Accord and then you can start farming the reputation in Oldham Accord um it's four quests or four uh yeah it's four quests to get into Oldham Accord the Nazjatar one is like 15 or 20 quests so I think in all it'll take about an hour, hour, 20 minutes, hour and a half. Um, I only did it once, and I did it on the character that I farmed my vial on. All the other characters didn't do it. So, um, we're going to come down here. We're going to talk to Jaina, and she's going to take you right into the BFA the intro line. Fall to darkness. Uh, I'm going to just say ready to set I sail. Because this is what somebody that hasn't done it before will experience. And if you've done BFA before on a character, absolutely use that character to get the um, the, way forward will not the experience for Oldham Accord. All you need to do... Uh, I'll, I'll go into that later. So this is the quest line to get you into the Nashatar. You're just, just going to have, have to follow this through. It's the opening quest line for BFA. It's no big deal. Okay, this is what it looks like when you've unlocked the quest line accurately. Uh, same portal goes to Oldham, but if you've done, if you're level 50, if you've done the Heart of the Azeroth opening quest and the Nazjatar BFA opening quest line, which is about 25 quests, um, this is what happens when you take the portal. You're going to go to the max level, the big boy Oldham. The dark visions have come to pass. You can see it looks a little bit different, and uh, we must push it this, these are the dailies that you're going to need to complete. Well, I'm just going to show you what the map will look like once you have unlocked it, uh, and then I'm going to go into what that means for you. And what that means for you is that all these blue exclamation points are your dailies. You're going to want to collect all these dailies every day, and you're going to want to do them just every day. There's four of them. So you gotta collect those three in there. You gotta collect this one out here, and Good day to you. pop open your map, and then uh, just complete them. This uh, assault assault on the Black Empire is a weekly or every couple of days. Uh, if you're coming out here daily and doing your four dailies, you will also want to complete that. Uh, that's gonna give you 1,500 reputation, and the dailies individually will give you 500 each. Uh, you gotta fly around, you gotta do some quests, you gotta kill some creatures. They're dailies, what are you gonna do? Uh, the ultimate goal is that you get your reputation all the way up uh, in Ultima Accord. And why do you need that? You need Ultima Accord reputation because the um, materials that you need to craft Battle of the Sands become discounted. Get a sweet discount of, uh, I think it's like 20%, 10%, 5%, it's thousands of gold. You got to get that discount. So you do have to farm up this reputation, and it is a bit of a slog, but I hope this video helps you get to that. Now, I will take you over to the vendor and show you what the price points are.
So once you've maxed out your reputation into Exalted with Ultima Cord, um, I suggest you just park this character over here and make it your in. Uh, make it your home base for that character. That character is going to buy you resources for your Bile of the Sands, which takes um, each Bile of the Sands takes one of these and four of these? Five of these? Eight of these. Takes eight of these. I buy it in groups of five because I craft the vials in five. So each vial costs one of these and five of these Sands of Time. Uh, without the discount, these Sands of Time cost, I think, 3000 or what does it say? 2800 Uh And then without the discount on these, they cost, looks like, 4800 Excuse me, 4500 Sands of Time's our material costs are 2700 So you get a discount of 300 apiece. You're saving thousands in this. This is why you need to get the Ultima of Accord uh, reputation up. It's time gated because the only way to get it is to do those dailies and that weekly. Uh, so it's going to take you a few weeks. You might as well get started now. Do it on a high level character. This character was my BFA boost. So he started at level 50 and I did all the grinding on this character. And that's why he's 54 now. <laughs> so I got four levels of experience just getting my reputation up to Exalted. Uh, and then I stopped immediately, and now this guy just buys those things and sends them over to the crafter. That's why you want Ultima of Accord. Might as well get started now, and just uh, every day just clean out these quests. Not so hard. Knock her out. Step three, digging holes in Pandaria using the Manted uh, Artifactor Kit, whatever that thing is called. Step three is digging holes. Okay, we gotta go to the Lore Walkers. Gotta go to the uh, Jade Forest, as usual, just to Pandaria. Once you get here to Pandaria, Pandaria. <laughs> you gotta go over here to the uh, Vale of Eternal Blossoms, and in here there's a building we need to fly to. I'm gonna pause it. Not gonna fast forward it, I'm gonna pause it. They are. Vale of Eternal Blossoms. You gotta come in here and you gotta do... Okay, the item you need here is the Manted Artifact Hunter Kit. Uh, you do need Exalted Lore Walkers, and that's a whole nother step. You can get it by flying around, and I'm going to uh, link some information about that. But, for right now, you need to come in here, you need to get this kit, uh, you need to get Exalted first, so... Get into it. Okay. This one is a bit different. You're gonna have to fly around all this island, and there's I don't know, a bunch of a bunch of places you're gonna have to fly to and grab statues and notes and do all kinds of interactions. Uh there's not a creature that you need to kill. You just need to go to the locations and learn about the lore, aka the lore walkers. Uh, and that will get you to max level. I follow this guy's YouTube video, and uh, he'll take you through each step. I can't do it any better. Uh, I am just <laughs> ineffective, so go ahead and pause this. I'm going to link the video and go through that and use his method to get Max uh, exalted on these guys, and then come back to this video. <laughs> or bail on this video. I don't. It's up to you. But I cannot do... Uh, his route better than he can, so here it is. Okay, when you're on an exalted character, exalted with the lore walkers, uh, buy one of those kits I for two that. restored artifacts and pop it open. And you're going to use both of these. Mm. Randomizes your big sites. Well, they're all over there already, <laughs> which is fine. The Sonic Locator will put them over there. So you don't actually have to use it, which is solid. So it automatically put them over there. And then you use that and it'll keep them over. There. Then you all you have to do is you need to go to those dig sites and dig, 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 dig. You do this one, uh, one hour at a time. And you can buy those kits for two restored artifact artifacts. So, uh, 
Uh, you can buy a handful of them if you want, but you're going to need to dig those up to uh, complete the projects to get these restored artifacts to buy more of these Olvir archaeology fragments. Not that complicated. It does take a million hours. <laughs> Because you're going to need so many of these fragments, it's not even funny. But using this Manted Artifact will make it easier because all your dig sites will be over here. It'll be much, much simpler for you. I guess I had them all down here, and then I randomized them. Now they're a little bit further out. Doesn't matter. Dig, dig, dig. Use that Manted Artifact. It'll help. That's it. We're going to spend some of those restored artifacts. I have a boatload. This character is not max level on alchemy, so I don't believe, um, well, they are maxed out on alchemy, but they aren't maxed out on archaeology. Uh, I do think you need to be maxed out on archaeology for the recipe to drop. I'm just going to YOLO it. I'm going to buy a bunch of these things, and we're going to do a bunch of solves and see how it goes. just got to know. Tolvir Archaeology Fragments. These are the items you need. I have a bunch of oxes. How many do I have? 30. Object is busy. Buy them. Travel safe. And we're going to use them. The answers are here. Huh. I can feel it. Yeah, uh, got them all. Do anything I cool. Do. I cannot use that. Can't use them. You need to be Archaeology 600. So don't buy them without being Archaeology 600. <clears throat> you could slowly level your archaeology, like this guy is level 91, he hasn't touched a dig site, just using the missions from the mission table, uh, and I had 30 boxes, so if you just send them out on missions, you will get your archaeology up, and once you get up to 600, make sure you're on an alchemist, and uh, level your alchemy, because your alchemy needs to be up, and your archaeology needs to be up, and then you can open up these boxes, and uh, you'll have fragments in those and you do you do solves for those fragments and you're looking for the canopic jar uh it's a rare drop on some of those uh solves and that will give you a chance at the vial you gotta just keep solving them until you get those canopic jars and then pop those jars open and hope i think it took me like 26 canopic jars and you get uh, like one out of ten solves is a canopic jar. <laughs> so you need a lot of these. Uh, or you could get it on the first one. You could be lucky. So, bottom line, get your arch get your archaeology up to 600. Get your uh, alchemy going. And pop open a bunch of these Tolvir archaeology fragments. You can dig those up by getting these restored artifacts by doing Manted Artifact Hunter's Kit and digging directly over here. So, that's it. Dig, 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 dig. And eventually you'll get canopic jars from solving Tolvir archaeology. And uh, one of those canopic jars is going to have your Vial of the Sands recipe. It's a very exciting time when you get it. Good luck. Step four is crafting. You're going to have to craft flasks and you're going to have to craft... Through gold. Totally forgot about step four. I bulk up on this, so I just forgot it. I forgot step four, and then I forgot step four again. Battle of the Sands requires true gold, flasks, uh, the vendor materials, and deep stone oil. So you're going to want one character to be a flask master with uh, your profession. I made my character that can create the Battle of the Sands. I made his alchemy flask uh, professions so as these are crafting um you'll get extra procs on your flasks so gotta get those gains there it is extra procs so you're gonna need to make one character a flask master and send all the materials for the uh crafting of those flasks to that character and then they can craft up the flasks and dump them right into their bank they can dump them in their personal bank and then you don't have to worry about it for a long time. I got a bunch of flasks in here. Got a bunch of uh, materials to make more flasks in here. What I don't have is true gold in here. Let me show you why. Hey, I almost forgot. I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. I'll buy no cave fish. You need these to create into... Um, 
What is it called? Deep stone. Deep stone oil. So, I believe this crafts between one and two. It's not a transmute, so every time you craft this, it um, it can proc two. As you see, it crafted two right there. So you're going to need a bunch of those cave fish. Luckily, on the global auction house, they're super cheap. I was buying them at 100 gold, now they're 50 gold. So, um, stack them up. Craft up these deep stone oils. You don't need to be potions master. You don't need to be transmute master. You don't need to be flask master for these deep stone oils. You just craft them. That's it. And then let's go take a look at the true gold. Okay. You're going to want to transmute any of your transmute guys that you're doing your daily one-click gold on. Just make them your true gold transmuter as well. What you're going to want to do with that is make sure your TSM mail strings are sending the... Uh, volatiles and the pyrum bars to that transmuter and then that transmuter can just sit on them in their bank and make sure they're transmute uh, mastery and hopefully you get some procs in there all it does is build you more true true gold you're going to need this true gold and you want to make sure that you're capturing the 20 percent gains off of the transmutation mastery there it is got one proc so uh, as you can see, again, I have a ton of materials in the private bank of this character, and I have a bunch of the volatiles in the character sheet, and I just make these as needed. And then you also set up your mailing string for the true gold. So the materials to make the true gold goes to this guy, and then the true gold uh, gets mailed to my crafter for the Vial of the Sands. It's that easy. Flasks, true gold, deep stone oil. Do it. One flask master, one transmutation master. Do it. Step five, crafting the vial of the sands and finally putting it on the auction house and starting making some money. All right, it comes down to this. So you got to make your TSM mailing strings for all the materials to come to your one crafter that you did all the digging on. So much digging, so much grinding, the most grinding. And then you craft your... uh. You finally get to craft your Vial of the Sands. I craft them in groups of five because I just have enough revenue for that. Um, just makes it easier so that I don't have to go uh, teleport to pick up new supplies every time I sell one. But you're going to work your way up. You're going to get there. So let's take a look at them real quick. I've sold 138 with an average of 52,000. And the cost to create these was 43,000. So... Average of 9,000 per um, profit per sale. Wicked good. Uh, 138 is definitely under reporting. But bottom line, you're going to be making tens of thousands from every time you sell one of these things. And you just craft them and you put them up on the auction house. Yes, it's time consuming. Yes, it's a long process. I took you through all the steps. It's brutal. If you stuck it out and uh, and you want to make that gold, then uh, this is a good way to make it. This is one of the top selling mounts, and not a lot of people have gone through that grueling process of getting it set up. <laughs> so, if you like gold and you like easy uh, easy times after significant setup, <laughs> check out the Vial of the Sands. Uh, hey, this is just a dude. This video has been a nightmare. I'll never record another Vial of the Sands video, <laughs> but I'm getting out of here. Thank you.